Well, thank you for joining today for our worship. And uh, like we have done now for quite some time, we dedicate the second Sunday of our of the month uh, to a communion worship where we partake of the communion. And as I, uh, as God leads me to bring the word to you, uh, like we were reminded, I hope and pray that the cares of this world, which are real, may grow dim. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, will grow larger and larger for us as we continue to live our lives here in this, uh, in this world. I want to tell you the story of a special tree and the name, it has been given a name and the name of the tree is survivor tree. Now, this uh, story of the survivor tree came to be because of what happened 20 years back. And if you probably, some of you remember that yesterday, uh, September the 11th, which is normally called 9-11, uh, the, the Western people like to put their month before the actual day. So 9-11 anniversary, 20 years anniversary took place. You will remember that that was the day when uh, terrorists uh, flew planes into the, uh, the Twin Towers in New York. And uh, the impact was so great that the Twin Towers actually burned down and crashed to the ground. And there were other casualties uh, in other parts of the US where the terrorists struck. But this happened on September the 11th. But as they were trying to overcome and recover and do recovery jobs, a month later, they found a tree that was in the vicinity of the of the Twin Towers. Uh, they call it Ground Zero. And this particular tree, of course, was very badly damaged uh, because of the intense burning that took a place. Uh, but it had not completely lost its life. The tree is actually a, as they call it, a pear tree, a Caleri pear tree. Its branches were broken and uh, the roots perhaps were damaged and many other trees around it was completely dead, charred, almost you know, completely burned down. But this tree, even though it was very severely damaged, they could find some life in it. So the workers who were doing the recovery jobs were determined that, you know, to try to save that tree, uh, they were hoping that some life will come out of this is ground zero as uh, it has come to be known. And so they made a tremendous effort to save what was known uh, came to be known as the survivor tree. So the survivor tree was dug up, very gently dug up and transported to a nearby nursery. And there was painstaking care that they gave to the tree, uh, you know, making sure it had nutrients, uh, rich soil, so that it would be nurtured back to life. And interestingly enough, for nine years, uh, the survivor tree uh, clung on to life, slowly recovered, and thankfully it was nursed back to health. And what they did, decided to do was they transplanted that tree back into ground zero. And uh, uh, today it stands as a memorial to the 9-11 tragedy. Uh, reminding the people as they see the tree that life can still thrive in spite of all the, you know, difficulties and problems that it had to face. I would actually like to show you some pictures of the tree. If uh, uh, Let me just share my screen with you. 
if you probably see on the screen, this is the tree. this is how they found the tree, uh, and I'm presuming they have transported this tree into the nursery where it was slowly being uh, nurtured. Uh, let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Yes, and then nine years later, this is how the tree looks. Notice it is being tra it is uh, transferred back to ground zero. And many people actually come to see it as an inspiration that life can still thrive in spite of all the problems. This is a tree, this is the tree as it looks in the summer and then it actually blooms. This is how it looks. Uh, it uh, has, you know, changed colors and it continues to, you know, thrive as a tree. Well, Interestingly enough, today we are going to talk about trees. Manoa led us in the, you know, the miracles of Jesus about a tree. And the question I'd like to ask is, what does this tree have to do with us? Can it teach us something? Can the survivor tree from ground zero uh, give us something to understand and learn from a spiritual lesson? Maybe we can begin by saying that sometimes we feel like the tree that has been badly damaged, isn't it? Uh, we also sometimes go through brokenness. The circumstances of life uh, brings great deal of difficulties where we struggle for life, just as the survival tree continue to struggle for life. And we can feel Sometimes like the fig tree that was presented to us in our meditation today. A fig tree that is useless as Jesus Christ cursed it. There was no fruit on it. And so as we reflect upon that, and the question obviously for us will be, what is our hope? If indeed we have been through circumstances that has beaten us down, that has <clears throat> made it difficult for us as we struggle for life. What is our hope? Is there a hope that we can be nursed back to, you know, a vibrant, thriving tree? Who is it that will help us? The workers in the ground zero were making sure that they provided the help that was required for the tree to grow. But who will come to our aid? Who is it that is going to nurse us back? Indeed, if we feel like that survival tree. So I um, want to talk about, you know, actually the tree of life. That will be the title of my sermon today, the tree of life. And let us see what is our hope. If indeed we feel like the survival tree. And I hope that as we discuss this, we would be able to uh, participate in the communion with greater sense of understanding and meaning and why the communion should be, uh, you know, one of those most hopeful rituals that we perform and that we participate in as we live our lives here on this earth. Now, talking about trees, uh, just to just to bring you a lighter, uh, to take you to a lighter vein, you know, uh, talking about trees, I used to remember that uh, as I was growing up, you know, uh, and I had a bunch of friends that we used to hang around with, uh, and many of them, they used to tease me. Uh, they used to call me a coconut tree because uh, I was the tallest in the group, you know, uh, all these other guys were, you know, not even coming up to my shoulder. And so they used to call me a coconut tree. They, they used to affectionately call me a lambu. <laughs> so that's the aside with regards to trees. But talking about trees, you know, it's interesting how trees have a symbolic meaning. Uh, not only, you know, for us in, uh, as Christians, but in all cultures, in all religions, 
trees seem to have some sense, some kind of symbolism. And as I was just looking through uh, this particular, you know, looking into some of these aspects, uh, I found something very interesting. You know, in Egyptian mythology, the earth and the sky, according to their, their, their mythology, were said to have emerged from the acacia tree. Uh, and they called the acacia tree the tree of life. This is in Egyptian uh, mythology. Now, in the Asherian, this is going back, you know, many, many, uh, you know, centuries back. The, in the Asherian iconography or the pictorial representation of their, their divine, uh, their divinity, uh, a sacred tree represents the presence of deity and also serves as so, a symbolic source of life. Is it interesting that trees uh, are given the symbolism of uh, life? Islamic theology also uh, talks about a tree of immortality. All right, so uh, even they have some or attach some significance to tree, to the tree. I'm not sure if you have heard of this, but this is the first time I'm hearing of it. Uh, the Akshayavat in uh, uh, Hindu mythology, it's called the Akshayavat, or you can translate that to be the indestructible banyan tree. Now, I remember the banyan tree being sacred for the Hindus. Uh, it is a sacred tree for them. And so isn't it interesting that uh, these trees uh, have these kinds of symbolism? And of course, how can we forget the bow tree or normally called the Bodhi tree? According to Buddhist tradition, uh, is the tree under which the Buddha sat uh, when he attained enlightenment. So trees seem to sort of uh, spur some kind of symbolic meaning, you know, for even for uh, cultures all around the world. And of course, we come to the Bible. The Bible uses the symbolism of a tree. And we know that even in the very first book of the Bible, trees are mentioned. We're introduced to the tree of life in the book of Genesis. We are introduced to the, uh, the tree of good, of good and evil, right? Uh, in, once again, in the, gen in the book of Genesis. And we are also given to understand about uh, uh, trees in the book of Revelation. So the Bible begins with these trees and also brings trees right at the very end. Uh, so the symbolic tree of the good uh, knowledge of good and evil uh, and God saying not to partake of it. So the symbolism can go the other way but also the tree of life where we are asked to freely eat of it. And interesting enough, when God said, here is the tree of life, you may freely eat of all the trees except this one. So he included the tree of life to be eaten. That shows God's intention for humanity, that he wanted humanity to be blessed by life. Uh, and of course, we, 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 as we read through, there are other mentions of the tree uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Uh, we were introduced to one in, uh, by uh, Manoah today. But I want to go to Revelation and pick up two references to trees in the book of Revelation. And let me see if I can share my screen again with you uh, so that I can bring up those uh, uh, references. This is one reference in Revelation 2 verse 7. If you remember, this is the instructions to the, to the church at Ephesus. Notice what it says. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Very interesting imagery there. Notice it says, we will be given the blessing and the opportunity to eat from the tree of life. Notice the eat from the tree of life. We know physical eating sustains life, doesn't it? 
And so the symbolism of eating, or you could say partaking or participating spiritually is sustenance to life. And if I can just put a plug there, today we are also going to be partaking of something, eating of someone, isn't it? So look at the imagery there, very interesting. And here in this verse, it says, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. What is this paradise of God? Well, some of us could think that it is the kingdom of God, or some would say it is heaven. Well, I would like to stretch your imagination a little bit more than that. Is it possible that this could also have reference to the communion of the triune God? Maybe the paradise of God is a reference to a communion that exists, which is God himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And what is this tree of life which is in the paradise of God? Right? So let's you know, keep those thoughts in mind and we will hopefully come back to them as we talk about it. So uh, let me introduce another verse. And this is found in Revelation 22, reading from verse 1, it says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb of God, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Well, what could these trees be referring to? Notice they are available on both sides of the river. Right? On each side uh, stood the tree of life. Could it... Uh, and this tree is also bearing abundant fruit. Fruit every month. Wow, what a... Uh, you know, what a copious tree this is. What a really fruit-bearing tree this is. And the tree's leaves also provide healing, which is symbolic of life. Healing is a symbol of life, isn't it? So could this tree symbolize maybe plenty? Because there are trees on both sides uh, that it shows that it is easily accessible. It is showing God's heart that he wants life to be imparted to everyone. It's available in plenty, and uh, the fruit is available round the year. Every month, the tree bears its fruit. And so, what could these trees be referring to? You have the tree of life in Revelation 2, which is in the paradise of God. And you have the two trees on either side of the river. Bearing much fruit. What is this tree of life that the Bible so strongly talks about, even back in Genesis, when he says the tree of life is available for us to eat from? Maybe John gives us some insight. And that is where I would like to come to our reading and just pick up some of it from John chapter 15 that was read to us uh, in the scripture reading. Notice John 15, and right away you are beginning to see something very interesting. I am the true vine. What's a vine? Well, you could say it's, 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 a, it's a tree, isn't it? And my father is the gardener. All right. Uh, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Right. Uh, and once again, if you drop down to verse five, it says, I am the vine. Jesus is referring to himself as the true vine or a tree. And he's inviting us to be in him, to remain in him so that we can be fruitful. And notice again here, he's introducing the father and my father is the gardener. He's bringing a Trinitarian perspective. You know, he is talking about himself 
the father and if you look at the same chapter if you drop down to verse 26 it talks about the spirit so he brings in the trinitarian perspective and the father is desirous for us to be fruitful full of life to bear much fruit and then in verse 5 it says i am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you cannot do anything if you do not remain in me you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers that's the fig tree that uh, mano was talking about in the miracles meditation on the miracles such branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burn but here once again it says in verse 8 this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples in other words uh uh the discipleship is all about remaining in christ and to be fruitful we have life you know in other words in the vine apart from the vine we have no life we are only as good as a fruitless tree that has to be thrown away so if i can then bring that question to all of us you know genesis the book of revelation talk talks about the tree of life the book the gospel of john talks about the vine right could it be that john is actually giving us an answer to the question that we pose what is this tree of life and genesis the tree of life in genesis were offering life by eating of the fruit revelation was offering healing and life by eating of the fruit and jesus says i am the vine in other words i am the tree jesus christ is the tree of life who is in the midst of the paradise of god the very center of the trinitarian reality father son holy spirit is it possible the tree of life is in the very center of the paradise of god the communion of the father son holy spirit and jesus is saying by remaining in him we are given entrance into the very center of the trinitarian life the life of god himself could it be that jesus is actually saying eat of me eat my flesh eat drink my blood because i am the bread of life if you remember john 6 i am the bread of life where does the bread come from well that's also plant based tree based you could say so jesus in this very rich imagery is talking about himself to be the very life the very center of life and he's inviting us into the very center as uh, gary dero would say our theologian the very center of the center god is the very center of the universe and jesus is the very center of the center john 6 chapter chapter uh, john chapter 6 and verse 50 he says but here is the bread that comes down from heaven which any one may eat and not die i am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats this bread will live forever this bread is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world jesus is saying that he came down from heaven is it possible he's saying i came from the paradise of god right he he became the bread of life for us in other words he became the tree of life for us his flesh which is in symbolic and in indicative of the incarnation his humanity he has given for the life of the world and so brother who is the tree of life you know with all that i can see jesus seemed to be saying that the tree of life is himself Jesus Christ our lord is the tree of life and he is inviting us 
to be in him, to be grafted in him, to be rooted in him, because that is where life exists. Now, back to the survival tree. You remember the survival tree? The tree that was struggling to, you know, uh, live. How did the survival tree survive? Well, it survived by the workers nurturing, it, providing it good soil, nutrients, water, pruning it. And so the question for us is, how will we have life? If we feel like a survivor tree, a broken down tree, a tree that is struggling to live, we will have life by becoming a branch of the tree of life, being grafted into and remaining in the tree of life by being tended by the gardener. Remember who the gardener is? the father of Jesus Christ, giving us nourishment and water. What is symbolic of the water? The Holy Spirit. And so, brethren, uh, do you feel broken down by life? Do you find the problems of life weighing you down? Burned down by the trials that we face on a regular basis? struggling to survive. May I invite you to come to the tree of life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Partake of him and you will have life, life forevermore. That is why we take the communion. That is why we participate in the bread and the wine, symbolic of the very incarnate life of Jesus Christ. That is why the communion has very rich meaning for us. And so, as we gather together for the communion, may I request you to take a moment to reflect on your circumstances of life. What are you going through at this moment? What are you facing at this particular moment? Are there, are there things weighing you down? And I can say yes to myself as I struggle with various challenges, which we even prayed for. Are you struggling with life itself? Do you find yourself uh, gasping for breath, gasping for life? Then may I request you to give your struggles to Jesus Christ. Allow his father to tend to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to water you. Take off the fruit of the tree of life. Take its leaves and be healed. Take the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, the tree of life for us. That you may have life and be joined to the very communion of life, the paradise of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. May I request you to bring your elements together. And as you hold your elements, let it remind us of the incarnate Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came in the flesh. And he himself said to us, Take eat of me. Take eat of the blood. So let us pray before we partake of the symbolism of bread and wine. Gracious, loving Father, thank you, Lord, for being the tree of life for us. And thank you even more for telling us to freely come and partake of the tree of life. Thank you that we have life in you. Thank you that you have the Father tending for us as the gardener. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for watering us and nurturing us. Remember each one of us in our circumstances of life, whatever may be weighing us down, help us, Lord, with the leaves of the tree to heal us. And as we partake of the fruit of the wine and the bread of life, bless it, for our nourishment 
spiritually, that we may live and have life forevermore. In his name we pray, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The bread symbolizing the body of Jesus Christ our Lord. The wine symbolizing the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, washing our sins away and giving us life evermore. May you be blessed, brethren, even as you reflect and meditate upon the tree of life. And may you be healed and have life forevermore. Amen.